The United Nations said Tuesday the Idlib offensive has displaced more than half a million people in two months. David Swanson, spokesman for the UN Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, said since December 1st, some 520,000 people have been displaced from their homes, the vast majority, 80% of them women and children. The wave of displacement, which coincides with the biting winter, is one of the largest since the start of the Syrian war nearly nine years ago. Swanson said the latest displacements compound an already dire humanitarian situation on the ground, when over 400,000 people were displaced from the end of April through the end of August, many of them multiple times. According to sources, Israeli prisoners are witnessing growing tension because of the authorities' pressure on the Palestinian prisoners, which forced one detainee to stab a prison guard in the latest angry reaction by captives. Palestinian detainees in all prisons and from all factions shut down their sections and returned the meals. These sources complained that the prison's administrations are backing off from their previous agreements with captives through worsening their living conditions. In Ramallah, the Palestinian prisoners' club said that a state of extreme tension prevails in Ofer prison after the Israeli prison administration claimed that a prisoner stabbed a guard in Section 12. Irish nationalists in Fien have surged to the top of an opinion poll five days ahead of an election in Ireland that looks said to be a major breakthrough for the former political wing of the Irish Republican Army. An Irish Times at a poll published Tuesday found support for left-wing Sinn Féin at 25%, making them a clear leader, with support for centre-right Fianna Fáil at 23%. Support for governing Fine Gael was 20%. Both Fine Gael and may not position Fianna Fáil refused to govern with Sinn Féin, citing their IRA links and opposing economic policies. Results from the Iowa caucuses were delayed on Tuesday as some chairs in the state said they were struggling to use the new phone application for reporting results. One precinct chair in Port County said he still has not been able to report his results because the phone app was not working and he has been on hold with an alternative hotline for more than 30 minutes. The application is one of the ways local officials who oversee individual caucuses are able to send results from each of the nearly 1,700 sites to the Iowa Democratic Party which compiles and checks the results. Hong Kong on Tuesday became the second place outside mainland China to report the death of a coronavirus patient, as restrictions on movement were imposed on two more cities far from the epicenter, including the home of Alibaba. Previously, Hong Kong hospitals cut services as medical workers were striking for a second day to demand its borders with mainland China but shot completely to ward off the virus. The death of the 39-year-old man comes as the semi-autonomous city closed all but two of Hong Kong's land and sea crossings with the mainland at midnight, after more than 2,000 hospital workers went on strike on Monday. As many as 9,000 medical workers could join a bigger walkout Tuesday to demand closure of the border across which tens of thousands of people continue to travel daily. The Lufthansa Group said on Tuesday that it would join British Airways in nixing all flights to mainland China amid a novel coronavirus outbreak that has sickened thousands and killed as many more in the country, simply citing operational reasons, Lufthansa said flights would be suspended until at least February 9th, after first mulling a stopover in Seoul, South Korea, for a crew swap. The decision by the Lufthansa Group affects both its namesake mainland brand as well as Austrian and Swiss. All three airlines plan one last set of flights to mainland Chinese destinations to enable the evacuation of crews 
who are already on layovers in the country. French police Tuesday cleared the last migrant tent camp in northeast Paris, moving 427 people to shelters as part of a plan to take migrants off the streets. According to authorities, the migrants that included four women were living in 266 tents and makeshift shelters in a canal site camp. The regional prefecture said the operation to tear down the camp lasted two hours. Dozens of informal settlements have sprung up in recent years around the French capital. Australia suspended Parliament on Tuesday to honour the victims of a national bushfire crisis that has killed 33 people as more than 100 fires remained ablaze across the country's east coast. Prime Minister Scott Morrison, who has received public criticism for his handling of the crisis, led a tribute as legislators returned to Parliament for the first time after the long summer break. Premier Morrison said he has written to state and territory leaders to begin discussions on the terms of reference for a so-called Royal Commission inquiry into the official response to the crisis, including the deployment of emergency services, the role of the federal government, and the impact of climate change. Organizers said on Tuesday the Singapore Air Show, Asia's biggest aerospace gathering, will go ahead as planned next week despite China's virus epidemic prompting some firms to pull out, but a key meeting of aviation officials has been cancelled. The trade portion of the air show held every two years is set to begin on February 11th under the shadow of the virus outbreak that has prompted measures by several nations, including the wealthy city-state, to contain the spread of infections. Singapore banned entry to all Chinese visitors and foreigners with the recent history of travel to China, which had raised concerns over the staging of the event. Britain will ban the sale of new petrol and diesel cars from 2035, five years earlier than planned. Prime Minister Boris Johnson will say Tuesday as he announces details of a UN climate summit due to take place in Glasgow in November. Premier Johnson will launch the OP26 a two-week conference seen as a moment of truth for the 2015 Paris Agreement to combat global warming at an event alongside Italian Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte and broadcaster and naturalist David Attenborough. The British Prime Minister will call for international efforts to reach net zero as early as possible, including through investment in cleaner technology, preservation of natural habitats, and measures to improve resilience to the impact of climate change. Sony said Tuesday net profit fell more than 30% in the nine months to December, but upgraded its annual net profit forecast on solid growth in its image, sensor and financial services sectors. The PlayStation manufacturer said net profit dropped 31.2% to 5.22 billion US dollars for April to December, partially due to the negative impact of foreign exchange rates. But the firm predicted net profit of 590 billion yen for the financial year, up from an earlier $5 billion estimate on expected growth in image sensor sales and the financial services sector. Max Verstappen believes he can thwart Lewis Hamilton's bid for a seventh Formula One title this season if Red Bull give him the tools to do the job. The 22-year-old Dutch driver won three races last year, finishing third overall in the championship, and is not about to be awed by anyone's reputation, even if that person is possibly the greatest driver of all time. Hamilton is chasing several records this season, including Michael Schumacher's 91 race wins and seven titles and has won five of the last six championships with dominant Mercedes. <laughs>